Previously, in part one of this project, I sacrificed the hex die holder from my tap and die set to make the handle for the tailstock hex die holder. This is part two, making the guide. For the guide, I'll be using a piece of 3 quarter inch mild steel round stock that is approximately the length of the handle and the length of the tapered part of the MT2 size dead center I'm using as an example. I mark the split between which side needs to be square, for lack of better words, and the side that needs to be tapered. It's less the length of this part that matters and more the diameters. To start off, I faced and center drilled both ends of the round stock. Since there is a decent amount of stick out and I needed to be sure the guide side of this part is as square as possible, I decided to use the live center, but the tailstock was pretty far out of alignment. I figured that aligning a tailstock could be independently useful, so I added that as a separate video that I'll link below. Now with the tailstock centered nicely, it's time to turn down the guide. The drill bit I used fits rather well, so I figured the diameter of the bit would be a good target. I should have been a little bit more sneaky when approaching the final dimension, but I was finding that the finish was much nicer when taking larger cuts and ended up overshooting the final diameter slightly. Because of that, there is a hint of slot between the handle and the guide, but I don't think it will be an issue when tapping. To finish off the guide side of the part and make it easier to slide the handle on, I just quickly beveled the edge. The guide side is now finished and is nicely just a little shorter than the guide hole in the handle. Next up is the MT2 size Morse taper so I can use this guide in the tailstock. Cutting a precise taper on a debatable lathe seems intimidating at first, especially when the angle indicator on the compound slide doesn't have any reference marks except for the ones I made with a marker. However, I figured out a quick and easy way to accurately set the angle of the taper, which I again decided was independently useful enough to have its own video, which I'll link below. Once the angle is set, it's just a matter of turning the diameter down like anything else.
Unfortunately, the compound slide doesn't have enough displacement to turn the entire taper at once, so once the small side of the taper was below the minimum diameter of an MT2 size Morse taper, as compared with the small side of the dead center, I just had to move the carriage down and repeat. It's worth noting that the carriage lock was very helpful for this to keep everything as rigid as possible. The final step was to cut a couple of relief areas on each side of the taper and carefully smooth and polish the finish with some sandpaper. All said and done, two Morse tapers of the same size when turned opposite of each other create supplementary angles, which means when held between two straight edges, the space between the straight edges should be the same on each side. This is kind of a sloppy way to check how precise the angle is, but with less than tenth of a millimeter difference across the length of the aluminum blocks, I'm pretty happy. Finally, the only thing left to do is check how it fits in the tailstock. To be totally honest, I'm really impressed at how well it ended up fitting. A little oil to keep the handle from binding, and it looks like this is going to be a useful tool to have around. The test to see how well this works is going to be in the form of making another component and will be part 3 of this project. So please subscribe if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up if you liked it, be sure to leave a comment with any thoughts or suggestions, and as always, thanks so much for watching.